Luke chapter number one beginning with verse 19 I am Gabriel the angel answered I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news because you do not believe what I have said you shall live in silence and you shall be unable to speak a word until the day it happens but be sure that everything that I have told you will come true Amen. in the proper time. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments. On today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject unshakable dependability. And for those of you who have Facebook pages, I want you to log on to your Facebook account and type in the hashtag as you tag the church. Solid ground. Solid ground. Tell your neighbor solid ground. Solid ground. And the theme that I want us to glean from on this morning as we enter into this season of celebration, it is important that we never doubt God and that we never doubt the reliability of his promises. Solid ground. My HMBC family as we begin to turn our focus from the events of November towards the pilgrimage of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, I want to remind you as we make plans for the Christmas holiday and as we, this, we seek to discover who's been naughty and who's been nice. We must commit ourselves to discovering and rediscovering that the purpose of this holiday is rooted and grounded not in receiving and giving gifts. It's not rooted in eloquently de decorated houses or trees. But the reason for the season is about the salvational victory that Jesus, the one true gift, has bestowed upon us. We understand that this salvational victory which God has allowed us as the disciples to partake in is rooted and grounded in the incarnation of Jesus the Christ. If you don't know, I am here to inform you that the incarnation is essential. And it is a pivotal event in Christianity. Right. Are y'all with me on today? Yes. The incarnation of Jesus Christ it demonstrates God's love for humanity. And it provides a means of redemption and salvation. 
through our acceptance by faith of this salvational victory found in Jesus and Jesus alone. We have been and we are continually being transformed. As we are being transformed, Hope Missionary Baptist Church, we have been commissioned not to stay in the comforts of the church, but to go into the uncomfortability of the world and offer the transformational power that we have discovered in Jesus Christ. We aim to make this transformational power available to those who have yet to experience it. And we desire to make the church and this church a true sanctuary. And it's our desire that 100 Limit Street be a true house of prayer. As we move forward, we must understand that this place is a place where the spiritually dead should be able to find life. This should be an alliance where the displaced can find refuge. And this should be a location where the unloved should find unconditional love. I want to encourage you as we begin this pilgrimage together to Bethlehem as pastor and people we are marching towards the incarnation of Jesus the Christ and we must understand the importance of this you see I want you to understand that no matter what life looks like we never doubt God and we understand he is reliable. In the midst of the unforeseen rain, we never doubt God. And we understand He is reliable. There are going to be times when we find ourselves, Sister Patty, in despair, but we never doubt God. And we understand He is reliable. Some of us are feeling hurt on today. And some of us get upset when we don't get our way. But we never doubt God. And we understand that He is reliable. And sometimes, thinking words, God doesn't move how we want Him to move. All right. Sometimes, his timetable differs from ours. But I want you to understand on today, church, that we never doubt God. And we understand that He is reliable. See, the songwriter said, The Lord is our rock. And in Him we hide. He's a shelter. In the time of storm, a shade by day and a defense by night. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He doesn't fear anything, and no one makes him scared. He's a shelter in the time of storm. My brothers and my sisters, there is a peace. That surpasses all understanding. All right. All right. When we come to the realization that God 
in reliable. See, there's joy, unspeakable joy. And the joy is flares up in my soul when I realize that no matter what I've been through, that God is reliable. See, I may not be able to move like Larry used to move. I may not go the places I used to go. And I may not see as good as I used to see. But my friends may be few. But I've come to the realization when I've looked back over the years that God has always been there. And God is reliable. Because great is our faithfulness. Morning by morning, through mercies I see. All that I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me in our text, according to the position of Luke, in his writings to the most excellent Theophilus. We find Zechariah and Elizabeth. And I want you to understand as we move through this narrative that they were righteous in the eyes of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, what that meant is they were guilty. All right. They were guilty, Reverend Slater, of faithfully obeying all that the Lord had commanded. And they were guilty of following his regulations. I want you to understand Zachariah and Elizabeth mm -hmm. desired a child. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> and thinking of Gladden, they had earnestly prayed for a child. Mm -hmm. However, they faced a challenge. But they now had advanced in age. And we understand that Elizabeth was unable to conceive All right. when she was younger. So one day, well, Zachariah was serving in the temple because it had came his time or his turn to enter the sanctuary of God Amen. to burn incense. Amen. By this time, the church folk had gathered at the temple and they were praying outside yeah. at the hour of the incense offering. Amen. Then all of a sudden, Gabriel, an angel of God, manifested himself right in front of the altar. Let's look at this realistically. You in the church. Doing what you do in the church is locked up. And all of a sudden, you hear a voice calling your name. Come on. HNBC, we're going to turn into some Olympic track stars. <laughs> you might be moving with a cane now, but you're going to be moving with swiftness. <laughs> but see, because he manifested himself right in front of him, he was paralyzed, and my brother was scared. Can y'all agree with that? I'm in the church a lot alone. Somebody didn't see Deacon Belch used to call my name out the darkness, but I had to tell <laughs> So he was paralyzed, Sister Rose Frank, and he was full of fear. 
But the angel of God calls him by name. He says, Zechariah, don't be afraid. And he lets him know that your prayers for a child have been heard by God. All right. And now is the time. And now is the season yeah. that your prayer is going to be answered. Elizabeth, your wife will bring forth a son. And you will name him John. You let Zachariah know because of this answered prayer, you are going to have great joy. Because of this answered prayer, you are going to be filled with gladness. And because of this answered prayer, not only will you be filled with joy and gladness, but the people are going to be blessed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Your son John is going to have a God ordained ministry. All right. And he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. But here's the catch John. Must never touch wine. Come on. All right. Or any other alcoholic drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And because of this God ordained ministry, Israel, many in Israel, will turn to God. He will move in the spirit of Elijah and he will prepare people for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we understand this is where we get to the crux of things. He did not believe. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, he refused to believe even when he was given the evidence of an angel appearing and he was granted the answers to his prayers. Yeah. So as we look at Zechariah, we understand. He is just like us. <laughs> you can clap your hands and say amen. If you don't agree, say amen. But he's just like us. But see, check this out. This is this, 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 this the good thing in the text real slave. See, he was righteous before God. Yes, he was. But he was not sinless. Right, that's it. Yes. All right, all right. I'm going to say somebody. All right. He was righteous yeah. before God, but he was not sinless. And it did not stop God from moving in his life. And we understand to doubt the certainty of the word of God and to doubt the reliability of God's promises is to deny his truthfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Come on. Due to this denial, Due to this unbelief, well, the angel then rebukes him. Mm -hmm. A 
upon witnessing Zachariah's unbelief, Gabriel lets him know who he really is. He said, bro, I ain't no ordinary angel. I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of Almighty God. And we understand this church. Only two angels names appear in scripture. For clarity, or today, Gabriel was God's primary messenger. All right. And when Gabriel was sent by God, he was sent to communicate some of the most monumental announcements in redemptive history. Yeah. Y'all pick me on today. Right. Gabriel had been sent by God to speak to Zechariah to bring good news or joyous news from God himself. Furthermore, furthermore, we understand that God is sovereign. Which means that God is our supreme ruler. That means that God is over the angels. And they always do what the Lord tells them to do. And Zechariah was well aware of this. And because of his unbelief, Zachariah would have to live in silence. Wow. And Zachariah would be unable to speak. Yeah. Let me throw this in parenthetically. Come on, come on. How many of us are living in silence? All right. Come on. And are unable to speak. Yeah. Because of our unbelief. All right. But he lets him know that everything that he has said will be fulfilled in God's divine time. Yeah. Yes. I want to let you know it will be fulfilled. Yeah. It will. What God has promised you. That's right. That's right. I know. I know. I know. It will be fulfilled. But Sister Bentley, it will be fulfilled in God's time. He don't need your help. He just needs you to do what he called you to do until the time comes for the change. Amen. Well, see, Gabriel closing words, my brothers and my sisters, they highlight Zachariah's lack of faith. But to us, and to Zachariah, Gabriel emphasizes the sovereignty of God. Alright. As we enter the season of Advent 2023, I want to make sure as we go forth in our celebration of the incarnation that we understand that we are never to doubt God. All right. And because we never doubt God, we never doubt the reliability of his promises. All right. God has unshakable dependability. Yes, yes. All right. With all of that said, what deeper understanding about God's nature and character can we grasp through Gabriel's emphasis on God's sovereignty and his highlighting of Zachariah's lack of faith. Number one, 
And this truly made me reevaluate my life. Number one, God's plans are written in stone and cannot be altered. We learn through our observation that God's plans are unable to be changed. Tell your neighbor, God's plans requires your obedience, not your alterations. When we understand this, it should give us confidence on today that whatever we are facing, and we're all facing or dealing with something on today, we're either dealing with it in our lives or in our ministries, but I want you to understand that it's all a part of God's plan. So no matter what it looks like, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter how we feel in life or about life, we must come to the understanding that God's plans cannot be adjusted or amended by us. And I want us to understand that anything we say or anything that we do does not diminish or improve God's plans in any way, shape, or form. Amen. Amen. Point number one. God's plans are written in stone. All right. Point number two. God's purpose Cannot be derailed. All right. That's right. Yeah. Through the interaction and dialogue of Gabriel and Zechariah, we gain an understanding that no matter what the circumstances may be in our lives, the purpose that God has for us cannot be manipulated. All right. The purpose cannot be compromised. Amen. And it's impossible to devalue God's purpose. All right. Okay. Hallelujah. We must not underestimate or overlook the purpose that God has for us and the purpose that God has for others. Mm -hmm. Point number one God's plans. Are written in stone. All right. Point number two God's purpose cannot be derailed. But last but not least, God's will, which is never wrong, always comes to pass. Amen. We conclude Amen. through this narrative that displays God's will as infallible and thoughtless. Understand, God's will remains infallible and thoughtless regardless of perspectives, regardless of cultures, or time period from which it is viewed. HMBC, we can rejoice on today, knowing no matter what people say to us or what people say about us, God's will cannot be adjusted by any man. It can't be amended by your haters, and nothing we do takes away or adds to his divine will. Right. Furthermore, 
We learn that no matter what the circumstances may be in our life, if we be young, if we be old, God's will cannot be compromised. Hallelujah. It cannot be sabotaged. It cannot be devalued. Don't underestimate God and don't overlook him. Amen. I want to reiterate for the final time, we are never to doubt God. And we are never to doubt the reliability of his promises. Yeah. Remember, God's plans are written in stone. All right. God's purpose cannot be derailed. All right. And God's will always comes to pass. So when doubt begins to cause uneasiness in our lives, we can declare God can be trusted. When we find ourselves seeking the greater but experiencing the worst, we can proclaim that our God, he can be trusted. When the burden of ministry causes a moment of weariness, we can profess that our God can be trusted. Our God is an on time God. Our God is faithful. Our God is a constant companion. And our God has unfailing love. I want you to understand on today that he's never lost a battle. He has never lost a patient. And he has never lost a case. He can order our steps because he's never missed a step. I want you to understand, my fellas, he's the champion. He's the MVP. He's the leading scorer and the defensive player of the year all at the same time. He has never stumbled. He's never been tripped up. He's a stronghold in our time of trouble. He's a rock that never moves. And he's a rock that never crumbles. He is a sure foundation and the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. He is a lamb without blemish or defect. He is an anchor that keeps us secure. He's the provider. He meets every need. He's a healer who restores. And he's a spring that refreshes. He's a God to the lost. He strengthens the feeble. He's a defender of the persecutor. Our God is a source of peace and a fountain of endless love. The songwriter says, when everything else fails, I can go to the rock when trouble is all around me. I can go to the rock. See, God promised that he would keep me if I abide in his word. No matter what the problem, Sister Patty, no matter what the situation, no matter what he said, no matter what she said, I can go to the rock. See, the rock is our way victim. The rock is our wonder worker. The rock is our strong tower. The rock is our heart fixer. The rock is our mind regulator. This rock is Jesus. He's a refuge in times of trouble. Jesus, our peace in the midst of chaos. Jesus, our provider. Jesus, our comforter. Jesus, our God. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our joy. 
Jesus, the light. Jesus, our strength. Jesus, our hope. Jesus, our salvation. Jesus, who is always here. He has unshakable dependability. When we were lost and we needed to be found, He has unshakable dependability. There were times when we were sick. He has unshakable dependability. When we are weak in time of sorrow, when we are uncertain, when we are wounded, we have a sacred dependability. When we are broken on the inside and we feel restricted, we have a sacred dependability. Sometimes we feel judged. Sometimes we feel chastised. Sometimes we are oppressed. Sometimes we feel depressed. But he has a sacrifice for visibility. My brothers and my sisters, the songwriter says, He abides in me. He gives me victory. God, he never fails. But through your faith and never is to pray. To walk upright, call him noon, say all night, he'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need for us to work because God never fails. I don't know about you, but I've said some things I shouldn't have said, but God has never failed. I've gone to places I should have gone. But God never failed me yet. I've fallen short of the glory of God. But he's never failed me yet. I have to always keep my mind stayed on him. But God has never failed me yet. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. We the angels. They bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve and our God has unsinkable capabilities. So as we go forth on this pilgrimage, with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. I want you to understand everything is not going to be the way you want it to be. God's not going to move every time you say move. You'll get discouraged. The enemy will try to take you out. But I want you to understand that God is reliable. And as we focus on the fact that God is reliable, as we go forth from this day forward, we understand God's plans are written in stone and they cannot be altered. God's purpose cannot be derailed. And God's will, which is never wrong, always comes to pass. Songwriter says, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then, a little light from heaven yeah. filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love and he wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Hymn number 298. Just have a little talk with Jesus. The door of the church will open.